Hello and welcome to my channel where we may be dazed, but we are not confused. We are doing a Find Your Oasis reading for the sign of Taurus. So the purpose of this reading is to help you find a little bit of help and some insight concerning a situation that may feel as if you are wandering in a desert with little to no water, no map, no compass, just a lot of barren land. Um, this is a metaphor for being almost uncomfortable, um, being in a space where it could be very lonely. Um, and in addition to that, though, there's also a lot of beauty in the desert. There are things that you can see and learn that make it a space that has a bit of duality to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at why it is that you are currently experiencing a desert-like situation, what it feels like for you, what you could possibly learn while you're here. We're going to look at some insight about how you could begin your path or journey towards a little bit of reprieve in the form of an oasis and what that oasis might be for you in this situation. All right. So Taurus, looking at your cards, it appears that the reason that you feel like you are in a barren, dry place in the desert um, is because you may be in a space where you want to help somebody to overcome something like alcoholism. Um, I feel like you want to move them to smoother waters, but you're not quite getting that wish. So you have this you recognize that this person has an issue and that it could be really causing them to be very dissociated from themselves. So I have the six of swords and I have the nine of cups in reverse along with a journey by moonlight. And on this card, you kind of have like this Pied Piper that's playing music by the moonlight. And then there's these fantastical creatures, which very much you could almost say is like an image you would get for somebody that's under the influence. Um, maybe a little bit dissociated from reality. And with the six of swords, I feel like you want this person to move to smoother waters. You want to help them to do that. Um, I feel like they may not be all the way clear in their mind. And what you want them to do is just to let go of the alcoholism. I'm getting very strongly that is alcoholism. Um, when we were talking about a dry barren place, I, I heard, um, or I immediately thought of the How Dry I Am, that old song that's talking about, you know, a person who um, is under the influence, but they're singing a song and trying to say that they're dry. Um, and that could be what's happening here, is that the person is in complete denial about the fact that there is a problem. And it's almost as if it's, this is you wanting to stage an intervention for this individual but being at a loss about how best to go about it, but knowing that something needs to be done. I feel like you want to respect this person's boundaries. You want to respect who this person is as an individual, especially if they might be resistant to your help. Uh, like I said, I feel like this person is very much in denial about the fact that they need help in the first place. Um, but I see you are recognizing that this person it might be spiraling and... You know, with this card, Journey by Moonlight, and the types of creatures I see here, this is, you know, like a, this person is like in an alternate space. Um, and you want to try to reach out and pull them back. So what does this feel like for you? With this full card in reverse, I feel like it's almost like you, you're you not able to get a new beginning. You want this person to get a clean start. You want them to be clean. You want them to be able to start over fresh, but it's just not happening. I feel like it's just, this is an ongoing thing. And for you, as a person that cares, as a person that is trying to, you know, stage an intervention of some sort, it makes it feel as if you want to try to help this person to get rid of this and help them clear up some things in the, in the past, even possibly that might be triggering them to become engaged in alcoholic behaviors. But it's like you're just wandering in circles. 
it's almost as if, you know, the minute you think that you're making some ground, maybe they're even going along with you and they're kind of like reaching out as if they are going to accept the help. And then at the last minute, you know, you're back on that, the roller coaster or, or going, you know, around the mountain. Um, that's something that we've t- used a lot as a metaphor for these particular readings is this idea of just going around and around this mountain. And this is it for you. You know, this alcoholism to which this person does not want help or want an intervention. But as a person who cares, you recognize just how dangerous this can be for this individual because it's really throwing them off of their life path. Now, what is the lesson that you can learn in this space? So the mystical shaman oracle card that I pulled for you is the Andean cross and the number associated is two. So I feel like that has to do with receptiveness, um, perhaps about the lack of receptiveness on the part of the person that you are trying to help. So let's take a look at the message for this card and I will read this for you directly. So the essence of this card says that the Andean cross represents the cosmology of the shaman. It depicts the four cardinal directions, the upper and lower worlds, and the steps to reach these realms. The hole in the center is a gateway to interdimensional travel, the proverbial eye of the needle we can all go through to experience higher states of awareness and wisdom and to break free of linear time. The Andean cross announces the start to a great journey. It's time to raise your gaze from the mundane day to day to that which until now has seemed beyond your grasp. Allow new wisdom to guide you and stop trying to make sense of it all before you respond with the resounding yes. The medicine for this card is that the time has passed and the window of opportunity has closed. Now is not the moment to take that leap you have been over preparing for. It is best to wait until conditions in heaven line up again to offer you a more propitious moment. Any bold action you take now will require tremendous effort on your part. Just as important as knowing when to act is knowing when to return to your inner stillness and wait for more favorable times. All right. So let's take a look at your guidance for how you can best find a way to get to your oasis in this situation, which would be a place of integration and healing. So the feather card I have for you is the white swan. And it says the power of divine grace is within you. So let's take a look at this as this is going to give us some insight about what you could do to begin to take those first steps to get towards a more peaceful place. Swans are mighty in size and power, yet soft with their effortless glide in motion. The swan has long been a symbol of beauty, grace, fidelity, and partnership. The symbolism is enhanced by the color white, the color of healing, purity, and the angelics. Swan is also a symbol for transformation. Many folk tales use swan to illustrate the shift from the duckling or child self into the fullness of maturity. Goddesses have also chosen swan as their mount like the divine goddess Saraswati, who unites with the healing element of water in her quest for wisdom, knowledge, and the arts. The white swan brings with it the message that the, that the power of divine grace is indeed with you and within you. Your connection to source is powerful, and the healing potential is connected with your collected merits in the form of grace. Now is the time to embrace these divine gifts where you most need support. That healing may be in the form of a blessing over a current situation or transformation occurring in your life. Know that the divine messengers are assisting you now. You have the power through your own grace to move through any situation or challenge that you are facing in a smooth 
and harmonious way. So the energies of this feather are grace, beauty, fidelity, and transformation. The elements are water and air, and the color is white for purity and healing. The affirmation is, I now accept the gift of divine grace and choose to honor the power and healing light within. All right. So when you make it to your oasis, the card we have is, I will fight. It will feel like being in a space where you will be willing and able to fight. So let's read the affirmation for this. Firmly, I stand with sword and shield, not backing down, but fighting for the light and for those who cannot fight for themselves. All right. So looking back at these cards, it really feels as if you are moving from a space of feeling almost a sense of desperation and trying to help someone that you care very much for to get out of a vicious cycle of alcoholism that they're not able to recognize that they are in. And it feels like you're getting nowhere because the person is not willing to cooperate. They're not willing to have a new beginning. They might start the journey, but then end up back on the same one, just kind of all over the place with no clear direction. And it just feels like it's just a, a very stressful cycle, which is the nature of, you know, alcoholism sometimes. But the lesson that you are personally learning, I feel, is one about timing and about how sometimes it takes situations like these for people to be able to come to a greater understanding of themselves. With this shamanic card and with us earlier saying that this person is kind of separating themselves from reality with their when they're in these drunken stupors and the imagery of the cards that we saw, kind of like this fantastical realm, this is actually going to ultimately be something that this person is going through almost like their own dark night of the soul that they're experiencing. And any efforts that you might make right now to try to pull them out before their time, before they're able to get the fullness of that lesson for themselves may not be profitable to you because it's just the wrong timing. In many ways, you know, the person has to be receptive and open to change. They have to recognize that there is a problem and they have to be the one that's willing to take that first step, you know, as the fool in the upright in order to begin a new journey with all the ups and downs that are also involved in that journey of moving from alcoholism to being sober. And that is a personal decision that a person needs to make um, in conjunction with a little bit of intervention. But what I'm picking up is that that you're not getting the cooperation because that person is not at that space yet. Your guidance that you have is recognizing the power of grace that you have within yourself to be able to still offer compassion grace, understanding, and unconditional love for this person to be there for them and to kind of stand in the gap for them so that they don't completely fall while also allowing them to have a sense of personal autonomy and being able to come to a realization of just how far off the mark that they are in their personal life and as far as taking care of their health. And the peaceful place that you're trying to get to in this situation is one of feeling as if you are able to stand in the gap and fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. And when it's not time for that person to, you know, kind of meet their own personal demons and challenge those on their own, you could be the person that is willing to help prevent them from going so far off the mark that they can't come back. And I feel like that is your peace in knowing that this person has people that care for them. And even if they're not doing exactly what you would like them to do in the moment, you can have peace in knowing that you are there for them. And that at some level, they know that you're there for them as well. And that they're not completely, completely lost and alone in this very difficult um, journey that they are going through in finding and understanding themselves through 
this level of alcoholism and struggle with that. All right. So that is what I have for you, Taurus, for your reading. Thank you for joining me on this channel where we may be dazed, but we are not confused. I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.